Hello and welcome to the 12th video in this series making simple Flappy Robin using Cocoa Studio X version 3 for Android. So in this video then I want to clean up a little bit of the logic inside our Hello World scene. Namely what I'd like to happen is um, when the Robin dies I'd like to enforce a gap of a couple of seconds there where the Robin stays in its collided position before resetting to the middle of the screen. And in this gap of a couple of seconds or so, no touches will be responded to. So the user can tap the screen as much as they like, nothing will happen. And what will happen in future videos, we'll actually add a game over label in there before then putting a touch screen to start new game label on the screen. But I thought it might be better to actually do this because the logics with the stuff inside Don't Touch began here like this and then the reset and stuff here is all getting a little bit untidy. So we're going to need some uh, variables and methods. The first one we'll have is a boolean called, uh, we'll call it accept touches. And before I forget anything else, I'm going to go into hello world scene.cpp inside the initialization here and just put accept touches equals true down the bottom here as well. And then we'll want some functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to, when we start the game, we're going to call start game instead of actually setting some of the part, the Robin um, properties and things inside the onTouch began. We're actually going to have a function for stop game and then we'll have a game over function. So that's called when the game's over and then we'll have a re-enable after game over function as well and obviously I forgot the void in front of all of these and the re-enable after game over is the function that will be called two seconds after game over is called so we'll drop into hello world scene.cpp and just create these functions very quickly And as it's customary, add in the brackets. Try as hard as I can. I can never get it to give me just one space below these. OK, so the brackets are added and we can go through adding these functions one by one. The first one is that we'll look at then is the game over. So game over gets called. So we'll set our accept touches equal to false because we don't want any touches to be responded to now. And what we can also do actually is inside the on touch began, wherever you are, somewhere here, here we'll say if not and accept touches then return at false so we don't do anything with the touches. It's bad code I think to have a return in the middle like this really, um, but never mind, it'll do for now. So accept touches is false like this, and then when we re-enable two seconds later, we'll put the accept, accept touches back to true. The next thing we want to do then is, if we think about our game over, if I just go up to our update, our game update, we have a reset of the robin and the stop clouds. So I'm just going to cut that uh, code out and put our game over in. And then I'm going to drop the reset robin into game over, but I'm actually going to put the stop clouds inside stop game. And inside stop game, I'm also going to put the next spawn times equal to 0.2. And inside here then, we'll call our stop game. The reason I've split stuff out like this actually came from the previous series of the version 2 Cocos 2DX where I was actually sort of future-proofing a little bit and realizing when I added some various other things into the game I wanted to do, I would need a separate stop and start game function, which is why it's done in this way in case you're wondering. Of course, we could just do this with the game over function on its own. What we've then got to look at now briefly is the start game and again if we go to on touch began, here it is. At the moment we've got all this code in here for starting the game. So we'll cut all this out and just put start game, which makes things a lot neater and drop all this code now inside start game. Except what I want to do now is just set the position, the Y position of the, the, the Robin. And in fact, before I do anything else, I'm going to copy that line there and drop this inside the 
initialization. Oh, I've got a feeling I've already added it. Nope, I haven't. Okay, so we'll set the robin's original position like this inside the initialization and then back down to here. We just need to set the position y of the robin and it can be the member variable of the middle y to get it back to the middle of the screen. So this is the stuff that's done inside when the touch starts. We set the robin moving, set him back to the middle of the screen. Game over is false and then we call the starting of the clouds. But the thing is actually the setting of the Y position of the robin here, I'm going to cut this out, actually will be put in our enable, re-enable after game over, after we've had our sort of two second pause. So the only thing left to do in our logic now, if we just go through it again, we're inside our on touch began. We touched the screen, the game was in a game over state, start game is called. Inside start game then, Game over is now set to false, which means we'll call the various update stuff in our update loop. The robin set to moving and the clouds are started. That means then that the, if I just go up to game update, sorry, I was just thinking of something parallel there. Game over is now false, so we do all this stuff, we spawn, we check whether the robin has died and the robin gets updated. Now, if the robin has died, then we call game over. And inside game over, then we don't want to accept any more touches. We reset the robin, which if you remember, sets his state to stopped and the start speed as well for next time when we start a game. And then we call the stop game, which stops the clouds and the tubes, sets the next spawn time. And now the last thing that we need is we want now after two seconds or two and a half or so to call this. Again, accept touches and put the robin back in the middle of the screen and in future videos show our various labels and things. So the way we do this is actually using schedule. If you will remember inside the init, there's a normal schedule, uh, schedule with the selector. Here we need schedule once. We just want to schedule this once. And then we have schedule selector and it's hello world and re-enable after game over. And actually there's one thing I do want to add uh, inside re-enable after game over here. We're going to add a float and DT, otherwise there might be compiling problems on Windows. I'm just going to go up to hello world scene.h and add this in here as well, like so, and save. And back to here, we've got schedule selector, hello world, re-enable after game over, we don't need the brackets. And now we specify our time in seconds, we'll say two and a half, and close the brackets. And that will actually schedule this function to be called then after two and a half seconds, when we'll accept touches again, and the robin goes back to the middle of the screen. And that should be, says holding his breath, all we need to do to get things running. So I'm going to let the robin die and then do a few clicks on the screen. So die, click, 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 nothing happens. And after two and a half seconds is now reset and I can carry on. So die, I'm now clicking on the screen, nothing is happening, there's no response. But once the robin's back in the middle, it does work. And the same thing should happen when I collide with a tube as well, which we'll just test here. Again, clicking, nothing happening, shows where is uh, hit and now the robins reset to start the game again. The only improvement we could do here now actually is to get the tubes themselves to disappear from the screen when the robin is reset to the middle of the screen and then what we'll do is we'll cross that bridge in a later video when we start adding the labels because I've gone on for long enough in this one now. So that's a little bit of logic, a little bit of cleanup for the interface and in the next video we'll add on our game over labels and press restart and screen to restart and stuff like that. So thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.